just as I suspected. Hollow! Even though He-Man is mostly an action show with a lot of comedy and occasional peril, what I really love about it is whenever they devote time to character development. I especially like it when a character who is otherwise not very prominently shown elsewhere getting the spotlight. You'll probably remember from the introduction video that I lamented Stratos and Ram Man getting sidelined due to newer characters introduced to the show. Today we'll take a look at three episodes, each focusing on an established character who never got the spotlight too often. Stratos, Ram Man, and a third one. Now to Stratos. He's one of my favorite supporting characters from the show, and yes, he does feature prominently in The Reign of the Monster, my favorite episode from the series. However, most of the time he either got stuck with speechless action cameos, or he just popped in to say a few lines and didn't do anything. And as mentioned before, he was almost entirely absent from season 2 because Buzz Off was introduced in his place. However, he did appear in one episode, and it's hands down one of the highlights of season 2, the betrayal of Stratos. In this episode, Skeletor and company attack Avion. Their force field generators aren't working and Stratos notices that they've been intentionally smashed. The Avionians are able to fight off Skeletor's henchmen, but then an Avionian named Hawk discovers Stratos working on the force field generator and accuses him of sabotaging it. For some reason, the Avionians believe her and Stratos is banished, which is bad news as this forces him away from the egg of Avion, which will cause him to lose his powers of flight. After getting attacked by a giant bird and saved by He-Man, Stratos explains his situation. In the meanwhile, Skeletor attacks again and this time the Avionians' weapons aren't working, which allows Skeletor to seal the egg this time without problems. He-Man and Stratos go to the Sorceress, who informs them that Skeletor stole the egg and tells them that he has hidden it into the Demon Zone. This is a problem because the gates of the Demon Zone can only be opened once a year and leaving them open will allow the demons to escape. Not only that, apparently Whiplash happens to live in the Demon Zone, and so he's set up against the heroes. He-Man and Stratos make it to the Demon Zone and are forced to leave Orko behind. They find Hawk, who of course turns out to be the real traitor. Stratos lets her go because he hates seeing bird people in cages, and they find the egg being guarded by a dragon. He-Man and company make it out, but have to smash the door to the Demon Zone in order to do it. They're followed by the dragon, but then saved by the giant bird thing, which has also befriended Orko in the meanwhile, saving him from a giant snake. The bird throws the dragon back into the demon zone, and He-Man steals the exit by smashing some stones. The Betrayal of Stratos is a really interesting episode. It's not quite on par with the Reign of the Monster, but it's nice to see Avion being used as a setting again. This episode does, however, evidence a rather high overusage of Whiplash from the start of Season 2, but thankfully Whiplash is interesting enough as a villain to carry the episode, although it's a bit surprising that he actually lives in the Demon Zone. He also apparently answers to some evil guy who looks like Satan. It's never explained who he is, but he's certainly more threatening looking than a prior personification of evil we've seen in the series. This episode does have some cheesy moments as well. We very nearly see what Orko looks without his hat, and I think it really makes Stratos out to be very sympathetic. Although, I'm a little puzzled by the ease at which he's dethroned, considering he's the king of the Birdmen. Seems like regardless of whether it's Avionians or He-Man writers, Stratos just can't seem to catch a break. This episode, however, is awesome and totally worth watching. What's the matter? As a Birdman, I've got a thing about cages. Now, by comparison, Ram Man wasn't as cool of a character, but he got plenty of appearances, and they were usually pretty good. I do think Ram Man is hilarious, though kind of like Hagrid in the Harry Potter movies, he doesn't get to stand out too much because he's a comic relief character in a show already full of comic relief. Ram Man also got two episode appearances in Season 2, compared to Stratos' one. But his first Season 2 appearance, The Shadow of Skeletor, apart from being the series debut of the Doombuster plane, is not really worth seeing. By comparison, his second episode appearance, Not So Blind, was great, although perhaps less about Ram Man himself. It begins with Adam buying a present for his mother, and he happens to overhear a storyteller telling about He-Man's adventures. The kids then bug Adam about He-Man, because Adam is apparently telling about his adventures to the old man, who then tells them to the kids. Although it's a bit cheesy, some of the kids do present some rather understandable questions. How come He-Man doesn't just go to Snake Mountain and smash Skeletor into little bones? Now, one of these kids is Loose, and no, I'm not making a child prostitution joke. That is his name, Loose, L-O-O-S. He's blind, and Adam apparently wants to give him an opportunity to meet He-Man and have an adventure with him. 
Luz, Ram Man, and He Man decide to go see the Cave of the Singing Crystals. On their way, Luz lets them know how he's able to get around without seeing. Once they get inside the cave, He-Man shows how Luz can make the crystals sing by stroking them. However, the crystal singing causes a stalactite to fall. When it breaks, there's a bright flash and both He-Man and Ram Man become blinded. It's then up to Luz to lead them back to the attack track. This episode is probably the best one from the series where there are no villains or monsters for He-Man to fight and the peril comes from something relatively simple, in this case, He-Man and Rami losing their sight. There have been other episodes in He-Man made using this principle, but I think Not So Blind is the only one that really works. Because for once, it's the heroes who are incapable of doing anything and need the help of someone else. The episode's biggest weakness is the opening, namely the part where Adam tries to explain to the kids why He-Man doesn't just walk up to Snake Mountain and punch the crap out of Skeletor. See, the more evil Skeletor does, the worse his punishment will be. And each day we come closer to taking care of Skeletor once and for all. I still think He-Man should beat him up. The rest of the episode is actually more dialogue based and we actually get to see what Luz feels most bad about, not being blind, but being treated differently because of it. Like I said, Ram Man isn't so much the star of this episode, but he does provide a lot of levity in what could have been a very drawn out episode but he's also very sympathetic, becoming frightened when he loses his sight. But he also gets to have one of the funniest dialogue scenes ever with Luz. How do you turn your head? Uh, well, uh, what I, what I do, it, it, well, you see what, um, well, I kind of, uh, I manage. Not so blind does have its flaws, but it's absolutely heartwarming as well. It does so many things right that it completely transcends being a quote-unquote special needs episode and actually becomes one of the standout episodes of the season and is definitely in the highest par of the series overall. Now we've touched upon two episodes featuring established characters who were ignored in season two, but to end this episode of the He-Man season two reviews, let's now look at an episode that features prominently a character who has always been on the down low. Queen Marlena. The episode is The Rainbow Warrior, and it begins with Skeletor's henchmen spying on the royal joust when Skeletor gets a brilliant idea of kidnapping the royal family and Tila, thus making the Eternian royal guards even more useless than before, as they will be without a leader. Tila has just lost the joust and ignores Queen Marlena, who's about to give her flying lessons. She reminisces about her arrival on Eternia in the museum room and decides not to go on a picnic with the rest of her family. Skeletor manages to surprise everyone and freezes them with the collector. After he sends his demands, Marlena readies the royal guard for battle and flies off to take on Skeletor and his robot soldiers. We also see her shoot down Skeletor and we even hear He-Man almost give away his secret identity. Her Majesty! Your Majesty! Mutt? Your Majesty. The Rainbow Warrior is a brilliant episode in almost every aspect. It has a very straightforward plot from Skeletor, but the idea of Marlena hopping in her old ship and kicking the bad guy's asses is just awesome. It's also cool to see the Royal Guards for once doing something useful, whereas they're barely present in any other episodes. This episode does have a few weird things about it, like the fact that the opening part with Skeletor sets it up to be Skeletor's eighth attempt at taking over Castle Grayskull. I have tried to conquer it six times! Uh, seven. Yo! Six, you flea-bitten furbrain! The first one didn't count, it was only practice. But it also has cool bits like the extension of Marlena's flashback we saw originally in the season one episode, Tito's Quest. Also, at the very end, when Adam asks his mother why she freed him out of all the other captives, she hints at the fact that she might actually know Adam to be He-Man. The episode has a cool twist, some great battle scenes, my favorite henchman duo, Beastman and Trapjaw, so you can see why this is easily one of my favorite episodes from season two. In fact, quite possibly the best episode of the season. I do have to give a few other episodes a rewatch before declaring that, but in any event, this is an episode you need to see, as are the two others I've already discussed. Next time, we'll look at what is possibly the best comeback episode from a He-Man series original character. Until then, I have the power, so can you. Hey, wanna help me decide what to do for the final video of the He-Man Season 2 reviews? Why not join the forums at itstailtime.net? You can also discuss movies, TV, anime, video games, and much more. See you all on the next one.